Before we get to the next myth, which is a big one, I'm probably gonna have to split this video into two parts, but before we even get there, I just wanna take a second to note how far we've strayed from our original point. Remember, we started by trying to explain a league-wide trend, an increase in the home run rate, with the hypothesis that maybe increased steroid use throughout the league could explain that. But so far we haven't found any evidence that steroid use was a league-wide trend. It was always a small subset of the league, maybe 30% of players, but more likely as low as 5 to 10%, even at its peak. And that small subset was not responsible for all the home runs. It was mostly pitchers and weak hitting reserves. So steroids cannot actually explain the thing they were first brought in to explain. The much more plausible explanation for the home run increase, as I explained in my first two videos, was a change to the ball itself an explanation that has explained virtually every sudden change in baseball's offensive environment going back more than a century. But we do have strong evidence that some players used steroids in the 1990s, and even though there's no good evidence that the steroid use affected their performance, it's still tempting to villainize them and delegitimize their accomplishments because they were trying to cheat, they were trying to gain an unfair advantage. This is why in my last video I compared the steroid panic to McCarthyism. In both cases, we start with a big scary claim, like Soviet agents have infiltrated the government, or steroids caused the home run surge in the 1990s. And then, even when it turns out that there's no real evidence to support that big scary claim, we use the fear that such claims kick up to get away with punishing people for smaller, slightly different claims like this guy is a communist, or this record is illegitimate. Which brings us to my latest steroid myth which is that steroids helped players avoid injury and extend their careers. This is kind of the thinking man steroid myth, the sophisticated take that you'll sometimes hear from fans who recognize how silly it is to treat steroids as magic home run beans, but still want to find some reason to punish people for using performance enhancing drugs. They'll say that the real benefit players got from steroids is that it kept them healthy and extended their careers past when they would have otherwise naturally declined. Now, you might notice that this myth doesn't do anything to explain the original concerns we had about the increased home run rate and the fall of Roger Maris's home run record. The fact that some players are allegedly not getting hurt as much or hypothetically having longer careers would not explain why home runs increased across the league in the 90s or why the single season record kept getting broken. But as I said, we're no longer even trying to explain actual observable phenomena. We're just in the realm of finding things to blame players for. But let's take this seriously, because there does seem to be a real connection between steroids and injuries. If you remember in my last video, when I talked about how desperation is a motive for players trying performance-enhancing drugs, well, what makes a player more desperate than a bad injury and a desperation to return to the field? In fact, many of the players who were caught taking steroids defended themselves by saying that they were trying to come back from injury. Mark McGuire, who gave probably the most honest and straightforward confession of his steroid use, said that that was what ultimately drove him to PEDs in the first place. I was uh, so frustrated with injuries, uh, I wanted to retire. So, um, yeah, I was using steroids thinking it was going to help me, and help me, it was brought to my attention that it was going to help me heal faster, make my body feel back to normal. I mean, I was a walking mash unit. So it does seem like players resorted to steroids as a way of recovering from injury. But did it work? The mere fact that someone does something to get healthier doesn't prove that it works. There's a billion dollar supplements industry that proves that. So let's look at Mark McGuire's career and see if we can see whether steroids kept him healthy. According to McGuire's confession, he first tried performance-enhancing drugs after the 1989 season, but didn't start using them regularly until after the 1993 season. That was the year when, as he put it, he was, quote, a walking mash unit and missed 135 games. He just wanted to get healthy for the 1994 season. Well, did it work? In 1994, his first year on drugs, he played in just 47 games. That was a strike-shortened season, but it's 47 was still fewer than half of his team's games. The next year, 1995, Maguire again missed 40 games. And even in 1996, he missed 32 games, although he did have the best offensive season of his career to that point. But we're looking at injuries now. And during the years when Maguire was on steroids, he basically had three fully healthy seasons. 1997, 1998, and 1999. In 2000, he again missed nearly half the season. In 2001, he missed 65 games. In total, he played in only 186 games over the final two years of his career, and over 10% of those appearances were as a pinch hitter. 
Injuries to his knees and his back limit him to a part-time role, and he was ultimately forced to retire from the game completely by his 38th birthday. In other words, it doesn't seem like steroids kept Maguire healthy at all. All told, he played in two-thirds of his team's games only 10 different times, and six of those times came before he started using banned substances. Does that seem to you like a guy who was able to play more because of steroid use? But maybe that's a bad example. Maybe Maguire was just snake-bitten, and maybe he would have played in even fewer games if not for steroids. So let's look at someone else. How about Maguire's old teammate, Jose Canseco, the poster boy for steroid use? We know he was on drugs more or less his entire career because he has said so. Was he able to play through injuries because of his admitted use of PEDs? Well, Jose Canseco missed 93 games in 1989, 31 games in 1990, 43 games in 1992, 102 games in 1993, 42 games in 1995, 66 games in 1996, 54 games in 1997, 49 games in 1999, 64 games in 2000, and 86 games in 2001. <sighs> now, I'm cheating a little bit, because those last few seasons, it wasn't only injuries keeping Canseco out of the lineup, he just wasn't that good anymore, so he was a part-time player. But here was a guy that barely played the field, he was a DH for most of the end of his career, and he openly used steroids his whole career. And yet he could only play in three-fourths of his team's games six seasons out of a 17-year career. Is that a guy who's getting an unfair advantage in terms of playing time because of his use of roids? Okay, but it's probably unfair to look at specific players. After all, guys get hurt for all kinds of reasons. Some players are more injury prone than others. What about the league as a whole? Did players in the steroid era get hurt less than they used to? Drum roll, please. No, they did not. According to a study published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine in 2001, quote, there is no evidence that the number of injuries in Major League Baseball has declined over the last decade. On the contrary, it appears that both the number of players and player days on the disabled list have increased. Team membership, injury location, and position do not appear to be related to the increase, nor does it appear that the increase in injuries is a result of more sensitive diagnostic tests, allowing the diagnoses of previously unrecognized injuries." End quote. In other words, no matter how you slice it, players got hurt more and spent longer on the injured list during the steroid era than in previous eras of baseball. Steroids were not actually preventing injury or helping players recover from injury faster. You can also see this in data about playing time for regulars, which went down in the 1990s. And this makes sense. After all, steroids are not good for you. They are not medicine. That's the whole reason for banning them in the first place. Anabolic steroids do have some limited medical uses, I don't want to deny that, but it's usually for things like HIV or certain cancers that cause hormonal problems. These are not things baseball players are typically dealing with. And if steroids could help you recover from baseball injuries, that is, if they were a legitimate, proper medical treatment, then fine. That would be allowed. Baseball players are allowed to get a therapeutic use exemption if they have a legitimate reason to be taking any drugs that are prescribed by a doctor, and even take risky experimental procedures if they want. Kurt Schilling had his ankle fixed with a tendon taken from a cadaver in a surgery that had never been tried before days before pitching in the 2004 ALCS. And people loved that story. But a reputable doctor would never treat most baseball injuries with steroids because they don't work for that stuff. Steroids are useful for adding muscle mass, especially in the upper body, but they don't help you with your bones or your tendons or your ligaments, which are the sources of most athletic injuries. In fact, using PEDs to rapidly add muscle can increase your risk of injury. Indeed, if you read the Mitchell report, it was this increased injury risk that was one of the motivating factors behind the league's crackdown on steroids. According to that report, there was a league meeting of team physicians in January of 2001, a full year and a half before Tom Verducci's bombshell expose about steroids in Sports Illustrated, in which the league tried to address a 16% increase in players going on the DL over the previous three seasons, and, quote, the consensus among the team physicians at the meeting was that the use of steroids had been a contributing factor, end quote. In other words, steroids are not actually preventing injuries, they're likely causing injuries. And this isn't surprising, we have tons of anecdotal accounts, both in the Mitchell Report and elsewhere, of guys using PEDs and then getting hurt. But once again, instead of changing our assumptions about how these drugs impacted baseball, we just find more ways to blame players. Because notice how this ends up working. We've now created a narrative where the conventional wisdom says that steroids prevent injuries, but evidence suggests they cause injuries. So now players are in a double bond, where if a player doesn't get hurt, that's evidence he was using PEDs. You know, that's what people say about Barry Bonds, who very rarely missed games in his career. But if a player does get hurt and is injury prone, like Mark McGuire, 
That's also evidence he was using PEDs. If a player recovers quickly from injury, that's evidence he was using. But if his injuries linger the way they did for someone like Canseco, then that's evidence he's using. People are so desperate to find some effective steroids that they've created a situation where they can blame these drugs for literally whatever happens. Steroids cause injuries, they prevent injuries, they help you heal from injuries, they create long-term injury risk. That's why I always come back to the McCarthyism analogy, because we're no longer trying to explain an actual real thing that happened, we're just looking for some reason to vilify the players. There was no issue of injuries going down in the steroid era. In fact, they went up, and players were injured more and for longer. Some players who were hurt did try steroids, because people do all sorts of dumb, desperate things for their health, but it didn't work. There was no observable effect of that steroid use, either in the rate of home runs, or in the rate of injury, or the speed of recovery. And still, people cling to the notion of steroids as magical healing agents, insisting that they extend careers, which brings us to the matter of age, which is related to the question of injury. But distinct enough, and I've been rambling for long enough, that I think I'm going to save that for the next video.